page 60, chapter 11, Mailman. In the spring, Mrs. Biswell is certain that Zinkoff will be absent at least one day. Take your kid to work day. The boy is forever blabbing about his father, the mailman, and that he himself is going to be a mailman when he grows up. Surely he will want to go to work with his father that day. The teacher is both right and wrong. Zinkoff definitely wants to miss school on take your kid to work day, but the post office will not allow children to accompany postal parents on their routes. They say it is too dangerous, and besides, the male jeeps only have one seat. Zinkoff has been begging his father for years to take him to work. Now, the thought of watching other kids go off to work with their parents while he stays behind is too painful to bear. Every day, he pesters his father. I can't, says his father. They'll fire me. Do you want them to fire me? The youngster can only shake his head and pout. All the pestering starts all over. Days of this. At least Mr. Z has an idea. Okay, okay, he says. I can take you to work officially, but I can't take you on a work day. I can't take you in the Jeep. So here's what we'll do. When Zinkoff hears his father's plan, he rushes next door to tell Andrew, I'm having my own day. Take Donald Zinkoff to work day. It's going to be on Sunday. Now I can do it and my dad won't get fired. I'm going with my dad on the real take your kid to work day, says Andrew. My dad's a mailman, says Zinkoff. I'm going to deliver mail. My dad's a banker, says Andrew. They are in Andrew's backyard. Andrew is batting a ping pong ball against the wall with his mother's pancake spatula. He borrowed the ping pong ball from Zinkoff weeks before. I'm going to make money. I'm going to ride my dad's clunker. I'm going to ride to work on the train all the way to the city. I'm going to carry my dad's nail bag. He says it's really heavy, but I'm going to carry it. Andrew turns and whacks the ball as hard and high as he can. It sails to the Zinkoff's roof and rolls into the rain gutter. I'm going to sit at my dad's desk. He said I can even sit in the vice president's chair. Zinkoff stares up at the rain gutter. That was his only ping pong ball. I'm having lunch with my dad. We're going to eat right there in the clunker. We're eating lunch in a restaurant. Sometimes the mayor goes there. My dad says when he gets a raise, we're out of here. He says we're never coming back to this dump. Zinkoff looks around. He doesn't see any dump. He wonders what dump Andrew's father was talking about. He can't look up at the rain gutter without the sun blinding him. When the official take your kid to work day arrives, Zinkoff watches Andrew go off to the city with his dad. Andrew wears a suit and tie. He looks like a little banker. Two days later, Sunday, is take Donald Zinkoff to work day. To prepare for the day, Zinkoff's dad has brought him a tall stack of envelopes and sheets of paper. Since there is no official mail to deliver on a Sunday, Zinkoff has to make his own mail. He writes letters, 40, 50, 60 letters, and more. He writes words that he imagines people say in letters. He feels really grown up because the sheets of paper have no lines. He folds up the letters and puts them in the envelopes. He draws stamps and crayon in the upper right corners of the envelopes and writes addresses and puts the finished letters, 100 of them, into the mailbag. The Zinkoff family goes to church early that Sunday. Two minutes after they get home, the town's newest mailman is ready. He takes the lunches from the refrigerator. They were packed the night before in two brown paper bags. He lets his dad carry the lunches. Himself, he harnesses to the great leather bag. It hangs down to his heels. He hauls it across the living room floor, out the door, down the front steps, and across the sidewalk to the clunker. Somehow, he manages to sit in the car with the mailbag on his back. Mr. Zinkoff is determined to make the day live up to his son's expectations. He knows Donald expects to travel a respectable distance to work, so he drives around for 15 minutes before pulling into the empty parking lot of a dentist three blocks from their home. The street is called Willow. Donald jumps from the car and starts off. His father grabs him. Whoa there, Nelly. He gives his son instructions. Start with the dentist. One letter to each house. No peeking in the mail slots. Act professional. What does act professional mean? Donald wants to know. 
It means behave like a grown-up doing a job. That's what you're getting paid for. The boy gawks at his father. I'm getting paid? Sure, end of the day, five bucks. Five bucks? Donald tries to leap for joy, but the mailbag holds him down. And one more thing, says his father. You can't be a real mailman without this. He reaches into the back seat and pulls out a hat. And not just any hat, his own mail carrier hat. The postal blue, straw-like pith helmet that he wears on hot summer days with his Bermuda shorts uniform. Donald is popping with pride. He puts on the helmet. Of course it's too big and comes down to his ears and nose, but he couldn't care less. He adjusts the helmet as best he can and staggers off to the dentist's door, the mailbag thumping against his heels. The helmet wobbles on his head. He stops, turns, he calls, and one more thing, Dad. What's that? Be friendly. Mailmen are always friendly. That's right. Now get to work. The dentist's mailbox is at the edge of the parking lot. Donald swings the bag around so he can reach inside, grabs a letter, and places it in the box. He turns to his father in the car and raises his hands in triumph. Yes! 99 to go. He starts off down the block. A few of the houses on Willow are single homes with porches. The rest are brick row houses like his own. Some have mailboxes fixed to a railing. Some have slots in the front doors. The first house has a slot. Donald slips the letter through. He listens for it to land, but he cannot hear it. The slot is high, uh, is eye high. Quietly, with his finger, he pushes in the swinging brass flap. He takes off his helmet and scrunches his eyeball to the slot and strains to see the letter on the floor. All he can make out is, green, is a green carpet. He looks around some more, hoping to spot something interesting. But all he sees is an ordinary living room with furniture and a picture on the wall of a of four basset hounds playing cards. No peeking. His father's voice pierces the jungle cat grumble of Clunker Four, prowling slowly along in the street. Donald lets the brass flapper swing down. He places his helmet, he replaces his helmet and goes back to work. He discovers one thing right away. It is usually more fun to deliver mail to a door slot than to a mailbox. With a mailbox, no one even knows you're delivering. But with a slot, you're dumping the letter smack into people's into the people's house. And sometimes they're right there on the other side of the door and you can hear them. Mommy, mommy, we got mail. He hears on the other side of one door. He pauses on the front steps to listen. There's no mail on a Sunday, comes a mother's cranky reply. Yes, there is. There's mail on a Sunday. Look. Donald walks off smiling. He feels like Santa Claus. At another house, just as he is about to push a letter through the slot, the door opens. Standing there is a two-year-old wearing nothing but a diaper and a mouth smeared with chocolate. They stare at each other for a while. Then Donald says, Mailman, and holds out the letter. Mumush, says the two-year-old. Donald can't tell if it's a boy or girl. Whichever, its cheeks are bursting with food. The air is heavy with peanut butter. You take it, says Donald. Maybe it's a letter for you. The two-year-old takes it and it takes it in chocolatey fingers. Suddenly, he or she turns and runs, crying out, Mamush! Mamush! Donald pulls the door shut. Several houses later, a kid is sitting on top on the top step. He looks like he's mad at somebody. The mailbox is bolted to the brick wall under the house numbers. Donald isn't sure what to do. Should he Put the letter in the mailbox or give it to the kid. But what if the kid doesn't live there? Do you live here? Says Donald. The kid gives him a glare, but no answer. The clunker grumbles in the street. Donald decides the kid probably does live there. He further decides that the professional thing to do would be, will be to put the letter in the mailbox. He is reaching out to do so when the kid snatches the letter from his hand. The kid looks at the envelope. He makes a face. This ain't no letter. It's a letter, says Donald. I'm delivering the mail. Look, this is my dad's mailbag. This ain't no letter, the kid repeats. His lip curls into a sneer when he says the word letter. This ain't no stamp. It's crayon. This ain't no address. You can't even read it. He rips open the envelope 
And this ain't writing, it's scribbles. He rips the letter in half and stuffs it back into the leather bag. Donald knows he's supposed to deliver the mail despite rain, sleet, or snow. But what about mean big kids who tear your letter in pieces? He turns his eyes to clunker four. His father gives him a thumbs up and points to the next house. Donald remembers. Be friendly. He gives the kid his best smile. Nice to meet you, he says, and moves on. Behind several doors, he hears dar dogs barking. Behind another, he hears a language he doesn't recognize. He hears bits and pieces of words and people sounds, and once, a noise that sounds exactly like that of a flying dinosaur he saw in the movies, but of course that couldn't be. Each time he tries to sneak a peek through the mail slot, Father calls, no peeking, but he can't help himself. There is a minute or two during which he has a strange thought. Actually, he doesn't really have the thought. His mind is trying to catch the thought as a cat tries to catch a shadow. The thought, if he could catch it, would go something like this. Behind the front doors of houses, incredible, impossible things are happening. And as soon as you lift the mail flapper, they all disappear. And all you see is an ordinary living room. When he comes to the last house in the second block, 56 homes so far, and one dentist, his father calls out, Lunchtime!